70 is 28 with a zero. All right. Put these together, and we get 288. Okay. And I think that a lot of times what's going on is that they're asked to be shown visual models or area models, and a lot of that is catching the kids off guard. Right. Because they, they understand their basic facts, but trying to represent it in multiple ways is where they're having a few difficulties. Okay. So while we think of some new ones, how about if we go back to our challenges and put those challenges back up? For those who are just joining us, might have just gotten in, just turned on their TV sets. All right, so we're putting up our 24th challenge, and we usually have lots of students who are calling in. I hope that we're all not just outside enjoying the sun, because we definitely want to get that vitamin D and enjoy the sun, but we do need to get our homework done. We do want people to call us. Uh, that number, 301-772-0080. It's on the bottom of your screen. But we want you to give us a call so we can help you with the math homework and you can do some of our challenges. Okay. So before we take our break, let's give you these numbers again that you can work on over break. All right, so we got card A. We have the digits 1, 6, 2, and 7. Okay, make sure you use all four numbers. Card B, we have 7, 5, 8, and 6. And remember, that's a 6 because the inside is not sh shaded in red. Card C, we have 3. One, six again, and seven. And our last card, we have three, five, three, seven. Make sure you use three both times when you work on card D. And when you work on uh, the 24 challenge, a strategy that I like to use, first thing you do, automatically add them up. See if something that simple. So if we come over here, seven plus Five is twelve. I thought I was going to add, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> it is going to work. <laughs> Seven plus five is 12. Eight plus six is 14. Twelve plus uh, 14 is 26. So that's a little bit too big. So now I want to start thinking about the numbers I have here. And literally, we start playing with the numbers. We have five, six, seven, and eight. And I look for those combinations that are going to get me to the factors of 24. Okay, so I'm looking, I see an 8 here, can I do anything with these to get a 3? Or can I do some subtracting and get a 12? Can I, so, oh, 12, well, 7 and 5 is 12. Mm -hmm. So if I say 7 plus 5 equals 12, 12 is a factor of 24, and its partner is? 4. 2. Oh, I'm sorry. 2, two. I'm sorry, I'm jumping the gun mm -hmm. on you. So we just use 7 and 5, and we need a 2 to partner with this 12. Mm -hmm. well, I got a 6 and an 8. Mm -hmm. You see it? Mm -hmm. Yep, 8 minus 6 equals 2. And remember we said you can take your answer from each part that you do. So these are partial answers and these give you an extra two set of numbers. Take that 12 times that 2 and then there's our 24. Can you ring the bell for me? Because I, I, sure I got can. it. Give me a bell. I sure can. Cowbell <laughs> All right, we're on fire now. All right. All right, so while, don't give up on this one because I showed you one solution because there is another solution, maybe even more than one more solution, and we want you to think about it while you're looking at your homework and while you're watching this break. We'll be right back. All right. I'm James. I'm from Tilton Elementary School. I'm here today for an email question of the day. Mary needed to place a fence in her yard in order to keep her sheep in. If her yard is a rectangle with a length of 26 feet and a width of 20 feet, how much fencing will she need? Well, let's take a look. So first, I would draw a rectangle to represent how, I mean, her feet. Then I would draw 26 feet at one side and 26 feet on the opposite side. Then I would draw 20 feet at one and another side and then 20 at the opposite side to represent the fencing. Since we're talking about perimeter, since, since I have to do perimeter, I have to add all the numbers, 26, plus 26, plus 20, plus 20. Six plus six equals 12, so I'll put the two at the bottom and carry the one. Two plus two, plus two, plus two equals eight. Then I'll add the one. That equals 92 feet. So 
The fencing of her yard would be 92 feet. That's it for the email question of the day. Stay tuned for some more on Count On Us. moments are what make every day count. We don't know what's going on with our daughter. We're worried that she might be drinking or taking something else. My husband saw cans and bottles in the back of a friend's car, but we don't know how to talk to her about it. She's been keeping her life a big secret. I was uncomfortable when a friend asked me how our daughter's doing, so I pretended everything is okay and realized that now I'm keeping secrets too. My therapist suggested we try Al-Anon family groups. I'm glad we took her advice. It helps to talk with people who understand what you're going through because they've gone through the same thing. Are you troubled by someone's drinking? You might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-ALANON or visit alanonfamilygroups.org. To the second half of this version of Count on Us. Count on Us. Mr. Johnson and I are here to help you with that math homework, but you got to give us a call. That number is 301-772-0080. We are having a great time working through problems for you, but we want to work through some problems with you. Know what you're so working on. So give us a call. Mm -hmm. Know what you're working on and give us a call. We do want to show you 5678... It sounds like a cheer. Five, six, seven, eight. Dance for us. Uh-oh. Oh, next time? Let me, let me, I'm going to snake it around for you. All, All right. right. <laughs> um, we do want to show you how there's multiple solutions to each problem. So we just solved this uh, with 7 plus 5 equals 12. This is our challenge 24. Here's our four digits. We said 7 plus 5 equals 12. We took 8 because we know 12 needs a partner of 2 to get to 24. We had two numbers left. 8 minus 6 equals 24 equals two. 2, and then 12 times the 2 gave us 24. But looking at this same card, let me make this a little smaller so we can use the same space. Again, one of the reasons I love the 24 challenge is it really does challenge because we can have multiple solutions. So I was looking and I said 7 minus the 5 gives me a 2. Okay. So I've now used my 7 and 5 differently than I use these. Here I added them, here I'm subtracting them. I got a 2. Well, now I see I have an 8 and a 6. 8 needs 3 as its factor partner to get to 24. 6 needs 4. So if I'm looking at these, I could actually go either way. Mm -hmm. Because I could take the 8 and divide it by the 2. 2 and get 4. 8 divided by this 2 equals 4. And then I could take the 4 times 6 equals 24. Or I could do the same thing, but the problem would be different. I could take the 6. So stick with the 7 minus 5 equals 2, so I have this 2. If I take the 6 and divide it by 2, that gives me 3, and then 3 times 8 equals 24. So we have now met the 24 challenge three different ways for one card. That's why it's so important that you call in, even if you have an idea and someone selects your card before you are able to get in, they always call in because your way might be totally different. You know, get your name inside out. Treasure chest, we have nothing in there this so far, but... Hopefully somebody will call us in. All right, so we're going to clear the board here as we start 
uh, helping you through another problem where you can look at different strategies for solving the problem. So what problem are we looking at next, Mr. Okay, so I'm going to read the problem out. All right. Now and I'll you write down the important and, facts that you hear. And you know what? What I do with my students, we do an activity called Boss and Secretary. And the boss reads the problem and tells the secretary what to write, and they work together so by I'm solving the problem. Oh, give me that back. I think I like that. Okay. Uh, you'll be the boss. All right. But, but the secretary has final say because you have to get it right, boss. <laughs> okay. So here we go. All right. There were 54 apples. So I'm going to start here with 54. I can write the word apple, or I could do a picture of an apple, or okay. that kind of looks like a cherry, but that's okay. There we go. 54 apples set aside as a snack for three classes of students. Okay, so these 54 apples, I have three classes. Mm -hmm. The teachers divided up the apples and placed equal amounts on nine separate trays. So as you're reading that, you said divided. You're telling me what we did. Mm -hmm. So we're dividing them. We have three classes, and mm -hmm. we have nine trays? Nine separate trays. Trays. Separate trays. So mm -hmm. I have to draw those trays. One, two, three. Uh, I'll do three rows of three since we've been talking about uh, visual representation. Okay. I'll make even rows. All I right. could have drawn four rows of two and and uh, had one extra. That's mm -hmm. okay. But here I like, I'll make it an even th uh, three by three. Okay. There's my nine trays. Now, if each of the three classes received the same number of trays, how many apples did each class get? Now, this is a multiple choice, so over on the side, I want you to put your choices. A, 2, B, 6, C, 18, and D, 27. Are you okay. asking me how many apples we get or how many trays I get? How many apples, oh, apples did each class get? Okay. Mm -hmm. And each tray has the same number of apples. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what we're going to do is start with, you know, again, having multiple options. I could take the answer and work backwards from the answers to see which answer makes the most sense. Because if everybody got two apples, three classes, three times two is six. six. That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. uh, six times three is 18. Mm -hmm. That still have way too many apples. 18 times 3, and if you need to see this, 18 times 3, 3 times 8 is 24, plus the carry or regroup that 2 over there. 3 times 1 is 3 plus, there's my 54 with the 18. Mm -hmm. Let's just see what the 27 looks like. I think 27, two 27s is 54. So three twenty-sevens is going to be too many. Mm -hmm. So working backwards was one strategy, but I want to, you use the word divided. Mm -hmm. So let's divide them up. And again, I could start with the long way. One apple, 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 one apple. One apple. Ooh, every tray has one apple. That's nine apples. Mm -hmm. Let's do it again. All right, 9 plus 9 is 18 apples. That's right, and all the trays got two. All the trays have two, but that's not enough. No, nope, you got to keep going. Well, I, that's, that's going to take me yeah. a long time. That's not very efficient. Mathematicians, you'll hear me say this all the time, like to be efficient. We have to be accurate, but we have to be efficient. So what if I took the 54 and I divided, you told me to divide, and divided them on to by 9, since mm -hmm. I have 9 trays. Mm -hmm. So let's see, 54 divided by 9. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say, well, I'm not really sure. Uh, we know our facts. I know that since 5 and 4 adds up to 9, the digits, I know it's uh, an even number. I know 9 times 5 mm -hmm. is 45. That's not enough. So the next one would be 9 more. 45 plus 9 would be 54. So 6 apples would be on each tray. Right. So uh, instead of putting single ones. I'm just going to write the number six. Is okay, that okay? That's fine. So six again is more efficient than doing, I could do little tally marks and put six of them or put five and cross one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to just write the number six because I now know based on my division that I'm going to have six apples on each tray. Right. But that's not how, what you, you didn't ask me how many apples on each tray because then I would say B. Right. And then I'd be wrong. Right. Because what you asked me was repeat the question please. How many apples did each class ah. get? How many apples did each class get? Well, we have three classes, and because I put them in nice, neat rows and columns, mm -hmm. let's just do this. Class one will get this whole column. Mm -hmm. Class two will get this whole column. And class three will get this whole column, mm -hmm. which means I'm getting six 
6 and 6 for my repeated addition, or 3 times 6 for a total of 18 apples. 18 apples. And you know what? That's what we found when we worked backwards. Mm -hmm. So again, if we do it this way and we said if there's 54 apples and three classes get two each, that doesn't make any sense. That's only six apples, not even close. Six times three is 18. That's not enough. 18 times the three classes is correct, and we're proving it visually, mathematically, with an equation, with numbers. Look how many different ways we just solved this problem. And it's so important because I've been watching kids and they're going through and they're using their reading strategies and I'm glad of that, boys and girls. But you have 54, you have 9, and you have 3. Those are the three numbers that you hear in the problem. And what our kids like to do sometimes, they Just like to chunk. Two. They pick two numbers to divide by. So if they pick 54 and 9 and did the division, they would see that number first. And that's the one that they always get caught up on. And sometimes, even though I heard you say the word division, we don't pay attention to all our words. Here's a 3 and a 9. 3 times 9 is 27. Right. So, you know, we've worked sometimes on, on writing these questions and what they call distractors. They put numbers in here purposely to see if you did the wrong thing. Here's what you're going to get. So they work through the problems and say, if a student multiplied instead of divided, or if they divide instead of multiplied, or they use these two numbers instead of these two numbers, what answers might they get? And they purposely put them in there to distract you from the right answer. But if you solve your problem and then go back and make sure you answered the question, how many apples does each class get? Three classes, six, apple, six on each tray, three trays each, 18, three 18s equals the total of 54. So once again, boys and girls, make sure you that you're paying close attention. She used 54, she divided it by nine and got six, but then she multiplied it by three. So she did use all three numbers. Now she could have just used 54 divided by three and came up with the 18 as well. So it's very, very important that you read what the question is asking you, and then you put the numbers in a, in a proper and, and if we did it that way, we would have ended up divide and getting 18, but what would be the purpose of the trays? Right. Right. We wouldn't have really put the apples on the trays that way. So we could have still solved it, but we're going to go to a phone call uh -oh. and see if we can help one of our students. Maybe they have a pair question, but we'll see. Go All for right. it. Welcome to Count On Us. How can we help you? Hello. Hello. Hi. Who is this? Yeah. Yeah. What's your name? Isaac. Hi, Isaac. I got it. I got it. Okay. Hi, Isaac. How are you? What school do you go to? Catherine T. Reed. Catherine T. Reed. And what grade? Elementary school. No, what grade are you in? You said? What grade are you in? You said? You said, what grade? Are you in fifth grade? Are you in third grade? What grade? I'm in fourth. Oh, fourth, fourth grade. grader. Okay. And so Catherine C. T. Reed, I teach at the Howard B. Owen Science Center. They're right next door to us. So, yay, Catherine T. Reed. Have Sorry. you been over to the Owen Science Center? Isaac? You said? Have you been over to the Owen Science Center? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, know yeah, that's I had a right. class from Catherine T. Reed today. Do you know Miss Goodson at uh, Catherine T. Reed? She teaches second grade. That's you said? Right. That's okay. Let's help. Okay, Let's so help what's Isaac. your geometry problem? Um, my problem is about angles. Angles, okay. So, so read so, your problem. Um, uh, how do you do a cute and an acute angle? How do you do an acute angle? Yeah. Well, do you know what an acute angle is? Yeah. What is an acute angle? Uh, wait. A, an acute an acute angle is like. It's like. So let me ask you a question. Is an acute angle 90 degrees? No, it's less than 90 degrees. It's less. Okay, so we got some idea. So what is a 90 degree angle? Which way does a 90 angle point? That's a right angle, a perfect square. A, a perfect, a perfect okay. square. Okay, so it will give you the a side of it. So which, how do you formulate a 90 degree angle, a right angle? What does that look like? A 90 degree angle? Yeah. It's like an L. It's like an L, okay. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can try to... Draw a picture of what you're saying. So you said a 90 degree angle is like an L. So do and we do want to be careful when we say it's like an L because that does look like an L. But I could have also drawn it like this. 
And, well, let's make that a little bit straighter there. Okay, I, I could have also I drawn it like this. Please. Isaac, can you see the pictures? You said. Can you see the pictures, Isaac? Oh, yeah, I can see the picture. Okay. So here's your L, and that is a right angle. But this one, does this look like an L to you? Yes. Does this one look like an L? Yeah, they're both L. Okay. Yeah. Then you see it. Sometimes yeah. spatial yeah. relations, we don't see them when they're upside mm -hmm. down. All right, continue. All right, so we now have a 90-degree angle, and you say that our acute angle is less than 90. So if this is our baseline, so this is our baseline and our angle here. Okay, so we're going to switch the colors up so you can see what's going on. So this is our baseline. So that means we have a right-sided right angle here. So that means we need an angle that's less than 90 because that's what you told me acute was. So how would I draw an angle that's less than 90 using what we have here for a 90 degree angle? What do you think I should do? Do you know what it's called when two angles, two arrays come together? Do you know what that point is right here? You know what this is called? I think it's called parallel. Well, parallel is when two lines run side by side. What letter? Does that look like a certain letter to you? Oh, uh, yeah. What letter does that look like? It looks like... It look like a Y. Uh, uh, without the line sticking down. No line sticking down. But just with those two Wait, kind of, a, v, a, a v. v. So it starts with a V. So when two rays come together at a point, two lines meet at one point, it starts with a V. Do you know what word that is? The intersecting. The intersecting Ooh. line. Intersecting that is when they, with a V. Come on. That, they crossed. That's that's an intersecting when, when lines cross. Starts with a V. Ver. Can you finish it off? Ver. The Ver what? Ver Tex. Vertex. There we go. So these two points where they come to meet make a vertex. So right here they met, and you said this was a 90 degree, and it normally has a little box there to let you know that that's a 90 degree. But now I want an angle that's less than 90. So what should I do for my vertex? You should start closing down the vertex. I should start closing down the vertex. So that means I can put my pencil or pen here and I can draw me a line out from my vertex and now this new angle once I erase the top part lets me know that it's an acute angle because it's less than 90 degrees but greater than zero. And, and if we visually put this back in for a moment and we say this is the L again no matter how it's oriented in space anything from this right angle in that's one degree all the way up to 89 degrees. So Mr. Johnson could have put this line anywhere in here. We could draw 89 of these little lines because any one of these would represent an acute angle. Does that make sense, Isaac? Yeah. And then always remember, here's another little idea so you can get used to. Whenever you make an acute angle, think of the Pac-Man. And Pac-Man is getting ready to come and eat up some stuff, okay? I'm getting good at this little picture drawing from the other side. <laughs> See the little Pac-Man? You, you play Miss Pac-Man? I don't think they know Miss Pac-Man. Really? Oh, that's, that's, you're aging yourself. I'm giving myself away. So, Isaac, did we, you, you kind of said, uh, how do we just show a, a, um, an acute angle? Was that the whole question that you had, or was there something else we can show you? Uh, that's the real question. Okay. I and know I, like, I mean, like, because I, I didn't really understand what was an acute angle. And I like to tell my students they always have a handy dandy, handy dandy protractor with them. Mm -hmm. Because if you open up your hand to the L, here's our right angle. And then as we bring it smaller, 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 we're making what kind of angle smaller than a right angle? Um, a right angle. Uh, What's smaller than the right angle? A cute angle. All, a so cute, as we close our fingers up, we're making angle. all those cute little angles. Uh, and then as we get wider, big mouth, wider, deeper, it becomes those obtuse angles, uh, which go. And, and, and those I love when we draw because it looks just like the protractor. When we start here at our zero, and we know that we have our straight line coming up as we make a perpendicular line. We have our right angle. On either side, we have our right angle. And we know that from here to here, this is our 90 degrees. And it doesn't matter which side we go on, 
we have from here to here is 90, from here to here is 90, but what's 90 plus 90? Well, uh, 90 plus 90. 180. Exactly. And this whole thing around, which looks like a whole protractor, becomes 180 degrees, which is a straight line. And that's why this straight line becomes a 180 degree angle. And if we come all the way around, 180, 180 becomes 360 degrees. And that's how much degrees is in a circle. And there's our big old circle. Yeah, Isaac. So I'm gonna have to. You're gonna have to get on the skateboard or the bicycle. So somebody say do a 360. You know you gotta do a Woo! whole circle. They tell you do a 180. That means you gotta flip and go the opposite way. So if you do those little sport things, have a little fun with it. It's a lot of math and everything we do. Everything we do. All right. So I'm gonna open up our treasure chest for you, Isaac. Did you get a chance to see our uh, challenge questions, Isaac? You say your daily challenge. Yeah. The 24 challenge. Did you see that? Yeah, I'll do it. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to put your name in here for that. And you that. know what? You have a very good chance of your name being pulled out. <laughs> right now. Right now. Right now. So let's grab a challenge. Let's see if we can load that up for you. There you go. Let me, let me click forward. All right. So are you ready? All right. That works too. All right. So let's switch it off so you can see what's going on. All right. So we have card A with a 1, a 6, a 2, and a 7. We have card B with a 7, a 5, an 8, and a 6. Card C with a 1, a 6, a 7, and a 3. Can I get 6, 2, 7, 1? 6, 2, 7, 1. Okay, so I'm okay, right. okay. 6, 2, 7, 1. Put the numbers down. Okay, now, go ahead and work it out for us. What do you want to do first, Isaac? Um, can you please give me just like three seconds? Okay, <laughs> 1, 2, 3. That was like really two seconds. You counted really fast. Oh. Count a little slower. One, one two, there you go. Two, That's what we do in um, sports. Seven times two. Seven times two is? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, the seven and two are gone. Okay. You know what, Isaac? Why don't we ask you to work on the problem, take a couple of minutes, not just a couple, three seconds, because we see that wasn't enough, but take a minute or two, take a couple of minutes, try to work through it, and give us a call right back, because our lines are wide open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to have an easy chance to get back in. All right? Well, thank you so much, Isaac. Thank you for calling. It's a call back. Yeah. I, I like working on geometry. Well, then let's do another one. Okay. All right, what kind of uh, see, geometry yeah. shall we do? They got to find missing values, I believe, in fifth, sixth you grade. You tell me. I'm, okay. I'll be your secretary. Let's see. So let's say we draw a straight line. Straight line. I'm going to, just because our hands wiggle a little bit, I, I like using a straight edge. It could be a ruler, but it doesn't have to be anything with a straight edge. And because you said a line and, and you want a line, I'm going to put an arrow on the end. Okay. And let's say we need a, a supplementary angle. And we know that one is, let's say, 65. 65. So I don't have a protractor here. Um, so, I mean, a compass, or I mean, a protractor. Mm -hmm. I don't have my protractor here. So I need a 65-degree angle. So I'm going to think out loud. I'm going to show you that when I draw a perpendicular angle, two angles that cross to form a right angle, that means this is a box. And I know this is 90 degrees. If I split this right in half, and we should all know how to do this. You should all know how to draw 90 degrees. You should also know how to cut the 90 degrees in half, and half of 90 is 45. So I know I need an angle bigger than the 45, but less than the 90, and you said 65. So 45 plus 20 gives me 65, and 20 more would be 90, it would be 85. All right, so it's, it's not gonna be exactly um, in half, 65 to 90 would be 65, 75, 85, 25 degrees. So I need to be a little bit closer to the 45. So here's my midpoint. Okay. So again, eyeballing, not measuring, but that's my midpoint between these two. So 65 is going to be a little bit less than that. So I'll take another color and I'll take a straight edge and I'm going to say 65 is going to be right here. Okay. Drawing it to my vertex, my point where my 
lines meet. Okay. So you told me that I needed a 65 degree angle, so this red line is 65, but you wanted a supplementary. I do. I want a supplementary angle. All right. Supplementary means that my two angles need to equal 180, not 90. All right. 90 means complementary, so I would just take 65 to get to 90. I need to take 65 and get to 180, and you know what? It's there. Uh, it's there, but on this note, I'm going to hold it for a moment because we right. have a caller. We have a caller. So we'll move this off, and we certainly want to get to our callers. So Rose is there. Hello, Rose. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Rose. What school do you attend? Thomas Johnson Middle School. Okay, and what grade? Six. Uh-oh. Uh All right, so what can we do for you? Um, I'm dividing mixed numbers. Dividing mixed numbers. All right, you want to take this one? Dividing mixed numbers. Okay. Did we just do that? Okay. So we'll, you we'll, have we'll draw to draw with a picture. Well, I'll draw a picture All and right. you, you help her out. You okay. draw the picture and we'll start this. All right, so, so give us your problem. Rose, what are the numbers? One... And two thirds divided by seven eighths. One and two thirds divided by seven eighths. Now we did problems similar to this earlier, and can you see what's on my screen? Yes. All right, excellent. So can we divide when we have a mixed number? We have to change the mixed number into an improper fraction. Excellent. So, and how would we do that? We multiply three times one. Three times one, which is. 3 plus 2 is 5. Excellent. Two more, which gives us 5. We keep the same denominator. Now we're dividing 5 thirds by 7 eighths. So what do we do next? Or is that where the problem um, is? We have to do KCF, keep change and flip. So we have to change the um, dividing sign into a multiplication sign. And then you have to make seven, eight, eight, seven. Okay, and that's, uh, you just said uh, K, what were the letters you said? KCF. KCF, which stands for? Keep, change, flip. Keep, change, O-C, and flip. So keep, change, flip is what you're saying. Some teachers teach it uh, just invert and multiply. And remember, Ms. Sternberg showed you earlier that we are flipping or inverting or using the reciprocal, which is the better word, for seven-eighths. We're flipping it to eight-sevenths. That's our reciprocal. Does that make sense, Rose? Yes. And because we use the reciprocal on this side, we're also going to bring it to this side, eight-sevenths. And we're multiplying it here, and these two numbers, seven times eight is 56, eight times seven is 56, which becomes a one. So we're allowed to then multiply it on this side. It's your KCF. We kept our first number, 5 thirds, we changed our division to a multiplication, and we flipped or inverted, and quickly we're going to say 8 times 5 is? 40. 40. 40. 7 times 3 is? 21. 21, and we want to take this back into an improper fraction. We know there's 121 in 40, because two of them would be 42, and how many are left over? You mean as a mixed number? Yep. I pulled out 21 from the 40. One, one and 19. 19, um, one and 19 over 21. One and 19 right. over 21. Excellent. And 19 is a prime number, so we know there's no smaller factors for this number. So there we have it. One and 19, 21s. Whether you learned it as KCF or whether you learned it as just invert and multiply or Y. Either way, lots of ways we get to the same one. Here's Rose's name. Okay. So we have two people in here. We're going out real quick with choosing one, right, of them. Choose one of them. It's Let's Rose or Isaac. Rose or Isaac. Rose or Isaac. Here it is. And we have... Call it... Rose! Rose. So right our last over, caller Rose. is our right winner right. Oh. Uh, for the first show, which is uh, was on for four to five. Uh, we want the rest of the callers to start calling in. We see a couple more people on the line right now. We're getting home from school. Excellent. Count on us is coming right back from 5 till 6 o'clock, solving more problems. So if you're on the line, stay there because they will get to your problem. For Mr. Johnson and myself, please remember you can always count, count on, on us. us.
my name is Mrs. Sun and I'm here with today's mini lesson on area. Very often people learn about perimeter and area at the same time. So I want to talk to you about what area is and the difference between the two. Our objective today is to apply measurement concepts in order to determine area. Area is the number of square units inside a shape. So we are looking at the inside of a shape. So very often you're going to look for keywords in word problems. Sometimes people are talking about finding carpet for a room or tile for a floor. Look for those keywords where the word problem is talking about covering the inside of a shape because often they won't say find the area. They will say how much carpet is needed or how much tile is needed or how much paper to cover. That would be another keyword, a bulletin board. So look for those keywords, and we're going to talk about how to find area in a moment. There are a few different ways. Let's take a look at word problem number one. Melanie wants new carpeting. There we go. There's that keyword for her family room. Her family room is eight feet by four feet. How much carpeting does she need to cover the room? Anytime there's a word problem and you don't see the shape, go ahead and draw that shape. So I'm going to draw a rectangle here. It's not going to be the prettiest rectangle, but it's going to work. And we're going to label that. We know it is eight feet by four feet. Now, in order to find the square units inside, we often multiply to find the area. And that will work, but I want to explain why that works. When we are multiplying to find the area, eight times four. What we're doing is eight groups of four. So what we're really doing is we're really building an array inside of this shape. So we would break this up into eight groups. Okay, that's four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're not equal, but pretend they are. And then here we would have four groups. So what we are doing when we are multiplying is we are building rows and columns of equal groups to build an array for 8 times 4. So if we counted that out, we would know that that would equal 32 square units. Since we know it's feet, that's 32 square feet. Anytime we're talking about area, we want to talk about the square units because we are building those square units inside of a shape when we multiply. So to find the area of a rectangle or a square, I want you to multiply. But the reason is you are building that array inside. If you are finding perimeter, I want to talk real quickly about the difference. Perimeter would be the distance around. So it would be 8 plus 4 plus another 8 over here plus another 4 over there. But that's another mini lesson for another day. Let's take a look at one other problem. I really like this problem. This is from mdk12.org. Nathan divided his rectangular garden into eight sections that are the same size and shape. What is the area of the whole shape? So this side right here says four feet, and this says seven feet. So there are a few different things we could do. If we want to multiply length times width, we could find the length and the width of the whole thing. If this section is four feet, this section is four feet, so this whole thing would be eight feet. If this is seven, and we know that this is a rectangle, then this is seven, and this is seven. So this whole thing would be 14 feet. So we found the whole length and the whole width by using what we know about these rectangles right here. So we could multiply the length times the width, 14 times eight. 8 times 4 is 32, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 more is 11, so it would be 112, remember, square feet, okay? Now, we could also find the area of this, this rectangle right here by doing this rectangle right here would be 4 times 7, because that's length times width, which is 28, and then four of these exact rectangles. So 28 times four would be eight and three more would get you the same answer, okay, square feet. But I like to find the length and the width of the whole rectangle. Otherwise, be careful because seven times four, 28, was the area of this whole rectangle, and that whole rectangle happens four times. So be very careful of word problems, but remember for rectangles and square, length times width. If you're not sure, you can always remember ma and pa, multiply area, perimeter, add. That will help you remember the difference. So 
My name is Mrs. Sun. That was today's mini lesson on area, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Simple moments are what make every day count. A healthy diet and plenty of exercise are keys to success, both on and off the ice. Teaching kids how to eat right will give them the fuel they need to be at their very best. Growing bodies need lots of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean protein, and low-fat dairy to be healthy and strong. A registered dietitian can work with your family to help you create nutritious meals you will love. And don't forget to exercise for at least 60 minutes every day. Visit kidseatright.org for more information. They're there to solve math. Me! Your live homework help starts now. Welcome to Count On Us. What is the length from the entrance to the giant wheel? All right, so let's add three here and see what happens. First, measure first. So the second equation for solving perimeter is? Two times length plus two times width. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello. So good to have you back with us for the second half of the Count on Us TV show. Mm -hmm. We're here to answer every one of your math questions you ever had or anything that's come up recently in your mind you want it solved. Mm -hmm. I'm Ted Herman. I'm Miss McCants. And you know what? I got to give a shout out to Miss McCants because it's so nice to be back with her on the set. Yes. Welcome. I had a little awesome. bit of moment there where I had like yes. a withdrawal. Yes. I hadn't seen you for a while. Uh -huh. And I thought I was like losing my, my feeling, my mojo or whatever. But now I feel like I'm all back in yes. good shape. And how did they reach us here? 301. 772-0080. And also on the World Wide Web, you can go on your computer and watch us that way. Yep www.pdcps.org. Uh, and then what do they do? Scroll down to the... They scroll down to our webcast. Oh, my goodness. And just make sure you turn your TV all the way down because we have so many callers ahead of you. Yes. We don't want to get confused when you're trying to talk to us through a phone and on TV at the same time you get feedback. It's called reverb. Reverberation and confusion. We hate that. But we love having you call That's because right. you're our show. And speaking about our show, we have any challenges today? We do have some challenges today. We have our 24 challenge. And here it is. Let me slide it down so everybody can see. And our 24 challenge card A is 1, 6, 2, 7. You and card B, I'll help you out, okay, sure. You. That's why I get paid a little bit. 7, 5, 8, and 6. Mm -hmm. Card C is 3, 1, 6, 7. And the card D is 3537, mm -hmm. and it might be the more challenging card. It has three dots on it, mm -hmm. so it's a higher level thinking. And they have to use a combination of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to come up with the number 24. Excellent. Okay, and if you see the number twice, you have to use the number twice while solving oh, the more challenge. So you got to use both threes. You have to use both oh, threes. Oh, I get you. Okay. And we have one more challenge. Cool. And I didn't see this challenge earlier, so it says, Ron found a piece of scrap paper which was left at his desk. Mm. The numbers 3, 2, 4, 7, 8 were added to make 87, but there were no plus signs. Where do the plus signs belong? Hmm. Hmm. There were no plus signs. So where do the plus signs belong? Are there any other signs you can use in this problem? I don't know. That's the challenge. And that's the cool thing about word problems. You get to really read all the words very carefully mm -hmm. to understand what they're trying to say. Yep. Otherwise, you might get thrown off by the problem. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a caller. Oh, good. You want to talk to Fatima? Sure. Hello, caller. Are you there? Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. What's your name? Fatima. Fatima. What school are you calling from? 
Oh. Who's your teacher there? Mr. Delacerda. And, oh, I think we, this is one of our frequent callers. Fatima? Yeah. Or the teacher. <laughs> Fatima. What grade are you in, Fatima? Fifth grade. Fifth grade. Okay, so what's your question? Um, my question is, two and four-eighths divided by one and two-thirds. Two and four-eighths. Two and four-eighths divided by what? One and two-thirds. One and two-thirds. Okay, so what steps do your, um, does your teacher tell you to do when solving um, division with mixed numbers? Turn them into improper fractions. Okay, so you're going to first turn them into improper fractions. What are the steps? Um, what are the steps that we use to turn mixed numbers into improper fractions? Do you remember? Yes. Um, you multiply um, whole number by denominator mm -hmm. and add that to the numerator. Okay, so two times eight is how much? Sixteen. Sixteen plus four is twenty-two. <coughs> twenty-two or twenty. Oh, 20. Okay, so it's 20, and we're going to keep the denominator the same? Yeah. Okay. And so what about <coughs> 1 and 2 thirds? Yes, turn that into an improper fraction, too. Mm hmm So 1 times 3 equals how much? 3. Plus 2. 5. Five-thirds. So now we have 20 eighths divided by five-thirds. So now what's the next thing we need to do? Can we change go ahead and divide like this, or we need to do something else? Uh, we have to change it to multiplication. Okay, so we're going to change it to multiplication. I'm going to just slide it over here. So I have 20 eighths times five-thirds. Hmm. Is there something else I need to do? Oh, um, you change five thirds into three fifths. Okay, so I'm going to change it to three fifths. So I'm going to rewrite it here. Twenty eighths times three fifths. Right? And now you can use cancellation. Okay, I was hoping you were going to say that. What do we need to cancel? We do cross cancel. Yes. You cancel 20 and 5. Mm-hmm. 5 becomes 1 and 20 becomes 4. Great. Hmm. And now you can cancel 4 and the 8. Mm-hmm. You're awesome. And that would be 1 over 2, right? Yes. Okay. And now that equals 3 halves. Mm hmm And okay. three. So you said three Half. halves. Okay, so we took the other part off because we didn't need that part. We're just going to bring it right on down here where we're going to change the division to multiplication and we're going to do the reciprocal or we're going to flip it. Okay? Okay. All right. So you told me to, to simplify and to multiply straight across. 1 times 3 equals 3, and 2 times 1 equals 2, which gave us 3 halves. Can we leave our um, final product like this? No. No, we cannot. So what is going to be our final product? 1 and 1 half. 1 and 1 half. 1 and 1 half. How did Fatima get that? I'm curious. Fatima, what did you do to 3 halves to get 1 and 1 half? I divided, oh, divided 2 by 3. You divided 3 by 2? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a trick question. Mr. Herman just wanted to know, and I wanted to clarify what you were saying. You had 3, and what you did was you divided into 2. Hmm. I mean, divided by it two. by two. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Divided it by two and had one whole and a half left over for each. Right? Yes. Okay, so excellent job, Fatima. One and one half is the correct answer. 
while I got Fatima on here, can I sure. add something to this? I don't want to mm -hmm. jump into your problem. But it's not my problem, it's our problem. It's our problem. What okay. a nice teammate, I tell mm -hmm. you. So, Fatima, are you still there with us? Yes. Well, instead of going division sign, divided by sign like that, I'm going to do it like this. Mm-hmm. And show the original problem in a different way. You just made that a complex fraction. I like it. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm just trying to emphasize why we do the reciprocal flip into mm -hmm. three-fifths. Mm -hmm. So, Fatima, when you have 20 divided by 8 with another division going on, how do we get rid of that 5 thirds by multiplying by what? What's the reciprocal? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? What fraction would flip that over? Reciprocal. Three-fifths, right? Fifth. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we do that, because what happens, Fatima? What happens to that, the fives and the threes? Um, Remember you cross-canceled before? I can't hear you. Oh. Earlier, we cross cancel, right? Yes. Okay, so that's what he's asking. What what can we do here? So Make the, the fives of one and the threes also a one. Excellent. Mm -hmm. But you know enough about algebra and any kind of math that whatever you do to the bottom. You have to do to the top. So that's why it turns into a multiplication problem with the reciprocal of the five-thirds we had originally. Now it's three-fifths. I just want to emphasize that some people just learn these rules and just mm -hmm. go ahead and apply them, mm -hmm. but we don't always know what they mean and why we're doing them. So I want to make sure it's really clear. But Fatima, you got your name in the treasure chest mm -hmm. one time, and it's back to you, Ms. McCann. Uh, Fatima, did you want to try one of our challenges? Can I see the challenge to call back later? Sure. Um, I'm going to put both of them up there. I'm going to put the challenge cards up there for the 24 challenge. So those are up there for you. And I'm going to also put up there um, our brain teaser when you're ready for me to take this off. Which card are you going to try? A, B, C, or D? D. Card D. 5337. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the brain teaser one up. Mm. I really like this one because it's challenging me as well. So Ron found a piece of scrap paper which was left at his desk. The numbers 3, 2, 4, 7, 8 were added to make 87. But there were no plus signs. Where do the plus signs belong? Okay. Okay. All right, I think this has really gotten Mr. Herman stumped. I'm just trying to understand what they're trying to say. <laughs> I think I figured it out, though. If Ron you found a scrap of paper hey, we, at his wait. desk, we no, but he, he should turn into the lost and found, Thank shouldn't he? Thank you so much, Fatima, for giving us a call, and we look forward to you calling us back with your challenge, okay? All right, so... Since it's just me and you, and we're waiting on those wonderful callers to call us, it's such a nice day outside. Maybe they're taking a long way home. And the, the days have gotten longer since we yes, turned the clocks yes, forward yes, or back, yes, yes. forward, spring back, mm -hmm. fall, fall back, spring forward. That's right. So we lost an hour, we lost an hour. but we also get an extra hour of playtime outside. Right, that's hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So can I show you a problem I saw that I thought was pretty interesting? Sure, and then I want to share a problem with you. Outstanding. This one's a type of problem you might see on that park test because it has A, B, C, D, E. Mm -hmm. So when you have more than one choice on the park test, you have more than one answer. Although on this one, I believe we only have one answer. I'll tell you why. It says, what is that number? Mm -hmm. And that's singular. Yeah. If they said, what are those numbers, then you're looking for more than one that's answer. Right. So you got to watch out for those little clues and hidden, hidden hints. The result when a number is divided by 2 is equal to the result when that same number is divided by 4. What is that number? Mm. Well, that leads me to believe, Ms. McCants, that the answer is the same. Mm -hmm. mm. 
So the result when a number is divided by two is equal to the result when that same number is divided by four. And that was going to be very complicated. If you try to find a different number, let's mm -hmm. say a number like ten, mm -hmm. and you divide ten by two, you get five. Mm -hmm. But then you divide. Oh, I think I know the answer. Oh, see that you're quick, but I was actually trying to get excited about this problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and you kind of like just let the air out of my balloon. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But continue. go ahead. Go Show ahead. off what you got and how you got it, Miss McCann. I just think then the answer is zero. Let her see it. Oh Am my I wrong? gosh! Absolutely right. How do you know that though? Because whatever number I divide by zero is going to be the same answer, which is zero. So if you divide two, let's try that out here, right here. So we said zero divided by two mm -hmm. equals. The same zero divided by four. That's right. And what do you get for that? Zero. Uh huh. And what do you get for that? Zero. So I was kind of right, but you were more right. I said it was the same number on mm -hmm. both sides, mm -hmm. but you, I don't know how you got it so fast. It took me at least two days. <laughs> I studied it all last night and the night before. I finally got it. How'd you do so well? I looked at my answer choices. You know what? That's not a bad technique. Mm -hmm. Let's tell all our viewers about a technique that's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not doing anything wrong. Mm -mm. It's just using your ability to be smart. Yep. So you take the answer choice they gave you and mm -hmm. plug them in. Well, you said it had to be the same number on both sides. Right. That one number. Ah. Uh, so you verbally said it for me. That's when I realized that it was zero. Can we get a full shot? Because that's a high five. That's a teamwork thing. Yes. This is teamwork yes. in action. That's how you should do things At in your classroom. Best. At its best. At its best. What was the other thing you want to show everybody? Oh, I wanted to talk to you. Well, I'm going to read the word problem to you. Mm. And then you're going to work through and process. And you're going to persevere. Persevere. Mm. One of our mathematical practices is going to persevere I'm more in of a, solving. I don't want to kill it, but I'm a visual person. I'm not okay, auditory. Okay, we, we might be able to draw something out for okay. you. Okay. Okay? All right. So here it is. Two groups of students from Douglas Elementary School were walking to the library when it began to rain. Two groups. Two okay. groups. The seven students in Mr. Stem's group shared the three large umbrellas they had with Miss Thorne's group of 11 students. If the same number of students were under each umbrella, how many students were under each umbrella? Okay, I'll read it again. Two groups from Douglas Elementary oh, School were okay. walking to the library when it began to rain. So do I need to draw you a picture? I would just wish you could just put the seven students down so I have a visual okay, number. Okay, so I'll put seven students. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are my seven students. Mm. Okay. And that's in one class. Yep, and Mr. Mr. Stems. Can we change colors so I'll know it's a different class over mm -hmm. here? Mr. Sims <coughs> shared the three large umbrellas they had with Miss Thorne's group of 11 students. Mm -hmm. All right. So are we saying we're going to combine both groups and share them under the same umbrellas, three umbrellas? Yes, we have three umbrellas. But we have seven here? Well... Yes. And 11 here. Mm -hmm. Those are the two groups. Mm -hmm. And we have three umbrellas. Ah. So if you really want to do the visual work, you mm -hmm. could put like, you know what? Would you do me a favor and cross out the circles as the people get put under umbrella? Sure, I can do that. I'll put the umbrella people in there. One, mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and put three over here too, if you don't mind. Sure. And she's just going to cross them right out. And we're still left with some more people to place under umbrellas. Nice job, Ms. McCann. And I'm going to put three. I'm going to take a chance to put three here and three there and three there. And we still have three more people. Nope. Oh, that was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. So how many in each umbrella? Mm -hmm. Six. Oh, seven plus 11 is 18 mm -hmm. divided by... Mm -hmm. The three umbrellas. umbrellas. And it goes in perfectly. Nobody's left out in the rain. 
If they were, we call them a wet head. But they're all dry. They're all dry. Oh, look, Nyla. Mm -hmm. Is that Nyla? Yep, that's Nyla. Hello. Hello. Is that, what's hello. your name? Hello. I can't, Hi. how do you say your name? Nyla. It is Nyla. Mm -hmm. From Akakik Elementary or Akakik Academy? Academy. Cool. What grade are you in, Nyla? I'm in seventh grade. Seventh. So is Akakik Academy like a seven, eight middle school type thing? Yes. Great. Thanks for calling in. Okay, next caller. Nyla. Oh, Nyla's still there, what's right. Question? Well, what's the question, Welcome Nyla? Welcome to Count on Us. Welcome to Count on Us. Mm -hmm. Who's your teacher? Miss Prince. Miss Prince. Tell Miss Prince we said a big hello from Count on Us. And what's your question? Mr. Herman is dying to help you. Um, it's negative 20 equals negative 4x. Negative 20 equals a negative 4x. Minus 6x. Minus 6x. Ooh, I like these. Uh-huh. And what are you trying to do with this problem? I have to find out what x equals. Okay, so we're going to solve for x, which is our variable. Mm -hmm. And you know about combining like terms. CLT is combining like terms. So what can we put together, Nyla? Uh, put together the negative 4x and the negative 6x. Excellent. What do you get? It would be a negative 10x. Outstanding, because Nyla knows enough to know that when they're both the same sign and you're combining like terms, you just add them together. So now you have negative 10x on one side and negative 20 on the other. We still don't have the x all by itself, so how are we going to get rid of what's next to the x? What's next to the x? The uh, 10, negative 10. Right, and that's one. multiplication right there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the opposite of multiplication, Nyla, to get rid of that? We have to divide. I love it. And Miss McCance is right there, ready to follow along your lovely voice. And oh, well, if you divide on this side, what do you got to do on the other side? You have to divide by a negative 10 on the other I side. I love it. And how come she wrote down just one X? What happens to the new, two negative signs, Nyla? Both cancel each other out. Right, because a negative divided by a negative or multiplied by a negative, you just wipe them out. And how about the tens? They turn into one, right? Yeah. And how about the other side, Nyla? It's negative 20 divided by negative 10. It's just... Pardon me? It's two. Right. Mm -hmm. And to tell you the truth, in algebra, it's nice to put the variable first. It's just a better style. So read off your answer, Nyla, please. X equals two. And then you know enough to say, you know what? You're not going to leave it like that. You're going to check your answer, right? Yeah. So take the two and plug it back in the where. To where the X's are in the, in the equation. Okay, and Ms. McCann writing that down right now, but now she's going to put a negative 2 in place of the X, I mean a positive 2 in place of the X. Okay, and I'm going to emphasize those 2's by making them blue. Now they're blue 2's, okay? okay? So let's go ahead and see if we get negative 20 over here to match the other negative 20. What's negative 4 times positive 2? It's a uh, negative 8. Yes. And then minus? Minus 12. Yes. And then if you have the same signs, you're going to add them together. So what's negative 8 minus 12 more? Minus 12. It's uh, 4. You're going to, remember, we're going to um, add the opposite. So I'm changing the... Subtraction to um, addition, and I'm going to make the 12 negative, yeah. which is opposite of a positive. So a negative 8 plus a negative 12 equals how much? Which is negative 20. That's right. A negative Excellent. Bing, bing, bing. Nyla, you're going right in there, but we're almost out of time for our break time. That's right. Can you Nyla. call back afterwards and do the challenge mm -hmm. with us? We'd love to have you back on the air again. Okay. Please call back from Akakik. I know you're far away, but... The phone line will still reach all the way out here, no problem. So let's get Nyla right into our treasure chest as our next contestant. Mm -hmm. And please call back again right after the break. All right. Okay. Thank you, Nyla. Okay.
my name is Shayla Tucker from Stephen Decatur Middle School from 6th grade. I'm here with your email coin for today. Here's our problem. Judy has eight candy bars. She wants to give one third of her candy bars to everyone in her class. Does she have enough for all 24 students? We already have our diagram divided into three pieces. So now we can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we have 24 pieces. And now for our numerical expression, we have the total of candy bars, which is 8, divided by the parts that are shared, which is 1 third. So we make our fraction, which is 8, divided by one-third. Now we have to find the reciprocal and we have to change eight to eight over one because we have to make this a fraction times three over one because that's our reciprocal which equals eight times three which is twenty-four and one times one is one. So our solution is she has enough for all twenty-four students to have a piece. My name is Nishayla from Stephen Decatur Middle School with our email corner for today. See you next time. Hey, we're gonna help this guy. Help Ricky Rubio save a life at heartrescuenow.com. Hi, I'm Lourdes Stefan, host of Univision's Sal y Pimienta. Cancer treatment can steal your beauty, confidence, and self-esteem. It causes changes in your skin and your hair. But Look Good, Feel Better can help. Visit lookgoodfeelbetter.org to find a workshop in your area. Let us help you feel like you again. We are so back here. <laughs> we are so glad to be back here. Not just so back here. Otherwise, that doesn't make any whole lot of sense. We're back here. We're so we back, back here. But you know what? Break. We're back from the break. That's right. And I lost saving consciousness. You. Yes, what? I'm helping you. I'm saving you. You're helping you. me. You're trying to yes, save me. Yes. I need a net, mm -hmm. a large net. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know what? We're on the Cal and Us TV right. show, the one that answers all your math questions. We're a Telly Award winning show. That's right. We are the whole here country. to help you with your math homework. And Miss McCants, she is the goddess of math. Well, I'm a little something. I'm not the goddess. Well, you're up here. <laughs> okay. So, did you want to try to show the uh, challenges again well, one more time? Well, we're going to go over how they can get in contact get with in us. Get in contact with us. That's right. 301-772-0080 is the number. Please give us a call. They can always look on our pgcps.org website and go down to our um, webcast. Mm -hmm. They can find us there if they don't have access to a television. Right. And they can also email us some there questions and we can have someone do our email corner. And believe it or not, you can go to YouTube. Yes. I go there almost every day just to watch our show again because I have no life. <laughs> so I go to YouTube, look up Cal and Us Math Show, and you'll find some previous episodes yes. when if we were all younger. Anything? Yes, younger by days. Okay, so I'm going to put the challenge. No one has called to do this challenge, and I'm really excited. I can't imagine to, why. Right, I'm really excited about this one. Let me ask you a personal question. Sure. Do you understand this challenge? I think I understand it a little bit, and I meant to talk to you about it over the break. I wish you had, because can you use well, anything maybe the last plus 10 minutes, signs? Maybe the last 10 minutes we'll try to work it out ourselves if but we don't have any callers. Is it only a plus sign you can put in there? Or can you put I'm others? thinking that's what's going on here. So let, let's talk about it. Let's read it to the audience. Okay. Okay. So Ron found a piece of scrap paper which was left at his desk. The numbers 3, 2, 4, 7, 8 were added to make 87. But there were no plus signs. Where do the plus signs belong? You see, 
I wasn't paying attention. Mm -hmm. No, so we're not going to solve it for them. They have to call in. Our next one is the 24 challenge. Mm -hmm. And I know a couple of callers called in on the very first show, our 4 o'clock show. Mm. They called in to um, solve. Yeah. I think card A. Uh -huh. So card A is 1627. Card B is 7586. That's actually my card. I'm sorry. That's okay. Can I say it? Sure. 7586. Okay. And card C, did you want to? No, I've oh. lost interest. Okay. Card C is 3167. But can I do card D? You can. If I did it last time, I just want to see you did if, a I, good job. if I can remember these numbers. Mm -hmm. Three, five, three, seven. So what's the rule for card D? What's the what? Rule, card well, D. Card D is usually a little tougher challenge because it has three dots. Mm -hmm. But what else? What's special about card D? Oh, there's two threes on it. That's you have to right. use both of them. You have to use both threes. I got you when now. You call I, wasn't, in. I wasn't really linking up with you psychically, but mm -hmm. now I got you. Now you're getting the vibe. I got something. Okay. All right. So we have a couple of callers. That's um, terrific. One is uh, waiting on patiently. Yes, has Isaac? been waiting very patiently. Nice job. You can have Isaac and take him okay. all the way to success. All right. Hello. Welcome to Count on Us. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. What's your name? Isaac. Hey, Isaac. Um, I'm Miss McCants, and this is Mr. Herman. What school do you go to? Catherine T. Reed. Catherine T. Reed. And who's your teacher there? Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Tell Miss, Mrs. Martin we said hello from Count on Us, and thank you for calling us. What is your question? Um, it's about geometry of line segments. How do you... My, my question says, how do you draw a line segment? How do you draw a line segment? Usually with a pen or a pencil. Okay. That's what my experience is. Well, been. did they give you any more information other than how do you draw a line segment? Oh, yeah. Okay, what is it? And, and, and they want me to explain how, how would I, um, like, do it. How would I... Like, show it. Okay, Isaac, what grade are you in? Fourth. You're in the fourth grade. All right, so they want you to explain how to draw a line segment. Hmm. Well, first, I, if it was my question, what I would do is start with the end point. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I started with that. Okay, so in your explanation, I would, I would start with the first thing I need is an end point. Okay. Okay. And I would probably label it if I needed to draw an example. Okay. Because well, we know line segments have um, two endpoints, correct? Yeah. Okay. So I would draw my line extending from my endpoint. And then I would have another endpoint because line segments are only part of a line correct okay, okay so um, I would have to have another endpoint and it doesn't really matter how long you make your line as long as you have two endpoints so you would have to have endpoint one let's call it that and then endpoint two and if you wanted to you could also name them with letters mm -hmm. you could call this endpoint A and mm. this endpoint B that makes sense yeah that's what I had on my homework. That, is that what you had? So you were just trying to check behind me and make sure I knew what a um, line segment was. No, I knew, but that's what I had on my homework. Is that what you have that's on your great. homework? So um, can you explain to us what an endpoint is? An uh, endpoint, I think it's two lines. Is it two lines? Wait, I don't know. Okay, so go back to, uh, let's see if we can go back to the... Um, image we need one endpoint right yeah and then we're going to extend our line from that endpoint yeah so we're going to have one endpoint we're going to label that a let's call it a and then we're going to have another um extend that line out to another endpoint and we're going to call that b okay okay so you if you're going to have to explain it you need to explain <laughs> how to create a line segment Okay, I did this, but um, I'm about to go get a pen. Okay. He's about to go get a what? He's going to get a pen. 
I think it's great that we use capital letters. Mm -hmm. Isn't that typically the rule for that? That is the rule. Okay. I have my pen of paper. Okay, so what is the first thing we need to draw? Uh, a line segment. Okay, we need to first draw an end point. Yeah, end point. So you need to write that down. <laughs> Step one, draw an end point. I did that. You got that? Yeah. Okay, and step two is extend your line from the first end point. I did that. Okay, and now you're going to put end point number two at the end of that line or at the end of that segment of a line. I did that. Now you're going to label it. Now this time I'm going to label this line segment, line segment CD. I did that. All right. You got it? Yeah. Okay, so now, was there anything else you were supposed to do with this question, Isaac? No. No? Hmm. So did we help you today? You said? Did, were, you, were you helped today? Um, you said? <laughs> did we help you today? Did Mr. Herman and I help you today? Um, yeah, about line segment. That's right. And do you remember how we started the line segment? Yeah. Okay, what was the first thing we did? We drew an end point. We drew. Point, basically, or you can call it end point. That's right. And then what did we do after we drew our end point? And we did it. We extended the line. Whoa, we the I like line. that word. Excellent job. And after we extended the line, what did we do? What was our last thing? We, we, wrote, M, we wrote A and B. Okay, we, we extended the line, we added another endpoint, and then we labeled it, right? Mm. And, yeah, and we put endpoint one, then endpoint two. Yes, right. The, excellent job, Isaac. Excellent job. Can I do a refresh with Isaac sure. real quick? Sure. So every line segment has a beginning and a... Uh... And... Oh, my goodness. Where's the bell? It's right here. Oh, my goodness. Ring Let me... It. Good job, Isaac. We are very proud of you over here counting us. Got your name in the treasure chest. Mr. Herman has your name in the treasure chest. So did you want to try one of our challenges, or um, do you need us to put it up here for you? Can I do the challenges? Which one? Um, I think A. Card A? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Now, someone called in the first show doing card A. You have to do card A a little bit differently. I don't know if they solved it. I don't, can't remember if they solved it or not, but I'm willing when to try it out. When the first show, you mean? In the very first show for the oh, 4 o'clock show. I didn't watch show. that one. Two. I was driving. Seven. I wasn't. No, I have to get here. That's how I get here, by driving. Uh-huh. I'm a very good driver. Okay, Isaac, I'm ready, and Mr. Herman is ready. Yeah, I'm ready, too. Okay, let's go. Um, we're going to act six times, um, seven times. You're going to add what? Seven times two. Yeah. Oh, you're going to multiply seven times two? Yeah. Uh-huh. What'd you get? Equals 14. Mm-hmm. Come on, girl. And we're going to do six times one. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm at six plus one. Six plus one. Yeah. I'm ready. Come on. What's six plus one? Seven. Seven. Mm-hmm. Has he used all the numbers yet? Yep. Six plus one. Now what do we do with the seven and the fourteen? Add them. Fourteen plus seven. Uh-huh. Equals how much? Fourteen plus seven. Mm-hmm. Twenty-one. 21. We got to get to 24. How are we going to get to 24? We only got to 21. Can, can I please redo it? I found out the correct strategy. Sure. Yeah, maybe well. We're, we're, we're here for you, Isaac. You go me. for it. Call back. You said? I'm ready when you're ready. Okay. Can we do um, 6 times 2? 6 times 2, sure. Now we're talking. What's six times two? You said? Twelve. Twelve. Okay, twelve. Oh, I like that X. 
And now we can do um Twelve plus one. Twelve plus one, uh-huh. And it equals thirteen. That's right. Plus seven. Ah. Thirteen plus seven equals. But if this doesn't work, Isaac, you might want to copy the numbers down and call back. Twenty. Twenty, but we're still trying to get to twenty-four. Uh, we're still short. All, All right. right, so what we're going to do is we're going to be here for another about 10 minutes. So work on it and give us a call back. You have plenty of time. There's no pressure, okay? Okay. All right. Let's go out there to Courtney, wherever you are. Courtney, are you there? Yeah. Uh, what school are you at, Courtney? Um, Bond Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And don't tell them, you're in third grade. I am in third grade. <laughs> oh, you are? I was guessing, but that's a great school out in Laurel. And what is your question today, Courtney? I think you called last week I was on. I think she called when I was on too. Cool. 10. Oh, I remember Courtney. Courtney kept calling with all of these multiplication problems. Isn't that you, Courtney? Yeah. Yeah, I knew I remembered you. We were going to change the show to the Courtney show. And Not count on us. And we call her Courtney the Multiplier. That's right, Courtney wow. the Multiplier. Wow, very cool. You have a good memory. Mm -hmm. You're young. So, <laughs> Mr. Ten. Herman is waiting to help you today, Courtney. Let's go. Okay. Ten um, simplified by five. Hmm? I mean, ten divided by five. That sounds better. I never, I'm not sure that meant the other one. Ten divided by five. And can we write it another way, possibly? Sure. I mean, that's fine. Mm hmm But can we write it with the regular division symbol? Sure. Mr. Herman likes it that way. With the so, house. <laughs> Courtney, can I ask you? Five multiplied by some number makes ten. Do you know what it is? Um three? Well, that's 15. 5 times 3 is 15. So we're finding out right now that division and multiplication are very related to each other. So let's try another multiplication. Not 3. That's too big. Um, 2. I like that. Watch the question mark turn into a 2. Isn't that cute? So what's 5 times 2, Courtney? Come on, girl. Five times two equals ten? Yes. And then subtract the ten minus ten and you get what? Zero? Mm-hmm. So what what's our fact we now know? Five times two is ten. But we could have done with Ms. McCann's way too. We could have said what number in the box would that be? Ten divided by five is some number. The same thing you just got up here. Five times what makes ten. Five times that what makes ten. And what was the what? Um, two. Yes. So two was the what. Because that's a terrible question I asked you when I said, what is the what? Then I might say, you know what? But I don't know what I'm talking about. What, what, what? What did I say? I don't know. But see, now you know the answer because 5 times 2 is 10. And these are basic facts that really come in handy. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you had money, if you had money, yeah. what kind of coin is 5 cents called? What's a 5 cent thing called in your pocket, per, in your purse, in your piggy bank, any place on the floor? What's a 5 cent piece called? A nickel. Yes. And two nickels put together make a what? Um, dime. Dime. And that's the same as a 10 cents. So now you're using money to use your math facts. I love Courtney. Mm -hmm. Just like you know Courtney from all, 
all her multiplication. Courtney is awesome. Ca Courtney get her name in the treasure chest yes. if she want to try don't a challenge. Forget, don't forget to put Courtney in the treasure chest. Uh, I'll, Courtney, put her I'll put her name in, not Courtney herself. <laughs> That'd be kind of tough. Did you want to try one of our twenty? I mean, one of our challenges today? Um, no, but I have another no! another question. Okay. Fine. Bring it on. Bring it Mr. on. Herman is ready for you. Let's hit it. He's on fire now. Let's go. Just don't hit Mr. Herman. Okay. My question is which can be um which can be um Yeah. Um um, have to look. Have to look. Have to look. We am almost there. Um, got it. Okay. It cannot be a length to the nearest one fourth inch. And and the and the problem is um one half three eight. Yeah. Yeah, three eighths and one inch. And um, yeah, that's what the question is. So it said, which cannot be what? Um, one fourth. Which cannot be to the nearest one fourth inch? One fourth. One half. Three eighths and or one inch. Are you sure it's the way the problem is being written down, Courtney? Because it's kind of confusing the way you said it. Yeah, because I'm looking at all of these and these can be. Uh, oh, I figured it out. I'm telling you, she is so sharp. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Okay, so we know that this is going to be equal to the one fourth, right? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so Courtney, is one fourth equal to one fourth? Mm. Um. Yes. We're going to draw a number line. I think that might help. What do you think, uh, Mr. Herman? Oh, that's a, you know that's awesome. I think a number line might help her out. I think it would help everybody out. How much does four fourths equal? Um, You're actually missing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get in there. I don't want How you much is one four fourths equal? Um, one one. Yeah, one. It equals one, right? Oh. Excellent job. Terrific. So I have one fourth here. I have one half here. I have three fourths here. What will go? Yeah, that's right. Right? Two fourths. Two fourths the same thing as one half. Good. I like that. Okay. So here's my one fourth, my two fourths, my three fourths, and my four fourths. Okay? Okay. All right. So if I have one fourth, does that equal? Yes. Okay. So this is gone. What about one half? It's equal. Is it equal? Yes. It, it is. It's equal to what? Um, it's equal to two fourths. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's equal to two fourths. Now, notice what you're saying. The fourths. We're we're looking for fourths, right? Oh, I get it now. Because we split our line up into fourths. So this is gone, right? Mm -hmm. So one fourth can be uh, to the nearest one fourth of an inch. Yes. Two fourths could be to the nearest fourth of an inch. So what could be expressed in fourths? Yes, that's, like. that's what the question okay, is asking. Okay, gotcha. So what about uh, four fourths? You said that's, that was. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. So the only thing that um, cannot be to the nearest one fourth of an inch. Courtney is three eighths. Because you can't simplify it down to fourths. Because we can't simplify it down to fourths. I love it. Courtney's so great. Mm -hmm. Courtney, call back anytime you want. 
How many minutes? Five minutes. Well, let's go right to Isaac, if that's okay with you. I'm sure. Courtney, it was nice talking to you. Hopefully, we'll talk again next week, okay? Okay. Keep All right. doing great things and in third grade at Bond Mill. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just going to make sure that she called on Wednesday. Yes. Make sure you call on Wednesday. Why, you work on Wednesday, too? I don't work Wednesday, but I know some people that she knows. That, that we knows. <laughs> that we have a nose. Okay. Isaac's calling back for the Isaac challenge. Isaac is back. And I'll get ready for Isaac because you're going to solve it this time. I can mm -hmm. feel it. Mm -hmm. I can feel it coming on. All right. Let's go, Isaac. Are you there? Isaac? I'm ready to answer. We are ready to help you answer. We're ready Let's to hear. Go. Can I please see the 24 challenge again? You sure can. Here you go. No. Change my numbers to 6173. 6173. We're with you. You can do whatever you want. 6173. A different card. Mm hmm. All right, Isaac. It's your chance to be a star. You are already a star, Isaac. There you go. Okay, can I please do. Um, but I have a, let me just flip back to my page. Okay. Hmm. Can I please do, um... Divided by three. You said six divided by three? Yes. Okay. Which equals two? Mm-hmm. Um plus one. Two plus one? Uh-huh. Mm. Three. Now, what we do with the seven, Isaac? You got a seven left. You can use the commas too if you want, but it won't do a whole lot of good. Can we use numbers? Can I restart? You sure can. Yeah. You got you got about one more minute, Isaac. The show's mm -hmm. almost over. May I please um, do seven plus one? So seven, three, one, six. Seven plus one. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we're talking. And that makes what? Eight. Yeah. Now you got a three and a six left. Um, can I do, um... You're close mm -hmm. to being definite. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. that, can I... What um, are some factors of eight? Can I, you, do you think you can get to 24 from eight? Yes. Okay, so what do you think you need? Not to stress you, but eight. we have five seconds. Eight. Four. Three. Yep, eight times three. So how would we get three from six and three? Call back on Wednesday because oh, we're going to have no. to have a... Six, six minus three. Okay. Oh, my gosh. He got it. He got it. Okay, right. let's He's go. going in there. Hurry up, hurry up, Isaac, hurry up. Isaac, Isaac. Isaac. We, Isaac we know it's Isaac. Okay, okay. hurry, 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 hurry. And you get to shake, draw shake, out shake, of the shake, box because you're so great okay. and talented and gifted and wonderful. Uh oh it's Isaac. You wow. are the winner. What a shock of so What a shock of real. Okay. Call back on Wednesday. Call anytime you want because you can always count, count on, on us. us.